Okay, so now we're going to look at a different type of regression called logistic uh, regression, where we're trying to predict uh, whether something is, for example, true or false, uh, rather than a number. Uh, so let's say we have um, uh, a university with two entrance exams, uh, exam one and exam two, and you need to predict based on the score of these two exams whether this, the university will admit you. Uh, and so here are some, some data that we can learn from here. So for example, let's look at, at this student here, got a 90 on the first exam and a 65, let's say, uh, on the second exam, and this student was admitted. Uh, so let's say that's one. Uh, and here we have another student who got a 35 on the first exam and uh, a 48 on the second exam, and the student was not admitted. So based on some x uh, set of x values, let's say here, can we predict whether this student would be admitted or not? Uh, and so rather than predicting a number, we're now going to predict something that's either 1, let's say for admitted, or 0, for non-admitted. And so we need to find this function. So we're going to redefine it in a slightly different way. So instead of it being 1, uh, we want to predict something that's close to 1 if it's admitted and close to 0 if not admitted. So here's how we're going to do it. So we have our normal linear regression. And so uh, with our weights here and our bias, and that'll give us some number. And so what we're going to uh, now do, so this is, this before this would have been y predicted, but this is some number, we want y predicted to be either close to 0 or close to 1. So we're going to take this um, prediction here, which we now call x hidden, and feed it into a so-called activation function which is going to give us uh, values between 0 and 1. Uh, and so the activation function we're going to use in this example is called a sigmoid function. And so here's the mathematical expression for it. And here is a plot uh, of y predicted versus x. And so you can see if x is less than 0, then y predicted will be closer to 0 than it is to 1. And if x is positive, x hidden is positive, then y predicted will be closer to 1 than it is to 0. In other words, it'll be above a half here and below a half here. If x, is, x hidden is negative and positive, respectively. Okay, so we're just going to add one more layer. So we're going to take our linear regression code and we're going to add this term here. Okay, so let's go do that. So I'm going to take um, my multiple linear regression uh, as, and start from that. So I'm going to make a copy. And start it up. Okay, so now obviously I'm going to have to get some different data. The data I showed you. So I'm going to like that. Uh, so I'll get a file called marks.txt. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, that seemed like that worked. Uh, let's get rid of the output. Let's import our libraries. Um, so let's uh, actually, let's look at the file. Uh, well, we can just go in here and look at the web page. Okay, so yeah, so you can see here, so here is exam 1 score, exam 2 score, and 0 or 1, depending on whether the student was admitted. Now, what, what we don't see here are any headers. So if I take this, here now, uh, and read this in instead, then I have to tell pandas that there are no headers. OK, 
Okay, and then I have to add my own headers. So my columns are, um, let's say, exam one. In the first column, exam two. In the second column, and then whether uh, the student was admitted or not. Let's have a look at that data frame. Okay, that seemed to work pretty well. Yes, so exam one and admit it. Great. Uh, let's get rid of this. Okay, so now I need to define my x values and my y values. So my x values, that's obviously exam one and two. So let's get rid of that. Um, exam one here and Oops, exam two. And oh, okay, that's sort of copied from from there. So I, I actually I don't think I need to double check this. I'm just going to put that in here. Uh, I'm probably regretting this later, but I'm going to delete this. So. That takes care of the X. I put in a I put in ones for the bias. Ah, actually, yeah, I think I think I want to plot this first actually to just convince myself that this is right. So let's let's do that up here. So that's my X and my Y. That's obviously wrong. My Y is my data. Um, that's admitted. And uh, okay, so to plot this, I'm gonna import another library called Seaborn. And I'm gonna abbreviate that as SBN. So in Seaborn, I wanna use a scatter plot. And my x is going to be exam 1 in my data frame. My y is going to be exam 2 in my data frame. And then I'm going to color it depending on whether they're admitted, whether the student was admitted or not. And all that, so the syntax is a little different in, in uh, Seaborn than it is in, in Matplotlib. But let's see if that works. Yes, okay, super. Good. Okay, so I've defined my x and y here. So I don't need to define it. Uh, well, it's probably best to define it down here as well. Let's just, let's keep it consistent. So that way I can remove the code above without screwing this up. So let's admit it here. And let's see what else. Ah, okay. So uh, I have two x values, and I need a bias, so that's a total of three. And since I'm debugging, I'm going to start with one. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, maybe that's, yeah, the learning rate will probably be different. So let's use one as a point zero one as a starting point. Um, okay, so learning rates. Um, okay, so my Y predicted now, I'm going to call X hidden. And then I have a, a second step now where Y predicted Oh, predicted, predicted there, is uh, my activation function. So that's one divided by, whoops, one minus, and then I need the exponential function, and that was minus x 
hidden. Okay. Um, yeah, let's let's before we get to the gradient, let's see if I get any error messages. No. Okay, so, so this looks like that was successful. All I need to do now is yeah, add those extra lines. Now the gradient, of course, that's gonna be a little bit different now. So let's look at that. Okay, so I have my Y predicted, uh, and that is the activation function where this is the input. So I have my L2, uh, that, should, that should be a half here, uh, and I'm taking the derivative with respect to y, right? But y is now, y predicted is now the activation function. So I can separate the derivative of the activation function with respect to w in terms of the derivative of the activation function with respect to its input times the derivative of the input with respect to w, right? So you can see these, these cancel here. Uh, and this is easy, right? That's, this is a linear function of w. Uh, and if you look this up, you can e either Google the uh, derivative of the sigmoid function, or you can use something like Wolfram Alpha. Uh, but what you find is that it's basically, uh, the derivative is the activation function, which is y predicted times one minus the activation function, which is one minus y predicted. Okay, so that goes in here. So we get this final expression for the gradient, right? So before the gradient was minus the error times x, right? Now it's minus the error times this expression times x. So let's go and implement that. Okay, so I need um, here, I need y predicted. And I need one minus y predicted. So now I want the, I moved the error here by mistake, that should be in front. Um, and so I have to be a little bit careful here because it, it, it's the order in which you have this is, is, has to be specified, right? So the question is, do I want all this multiplied by xp, right? If, or do I want well, this is that, so we have to be a little bit careful here, right? I want all this times xp. So I have to put all this in parentheses. Uh, but that should do it. So let's get the weights updated and um, let's see if this works. Well, I didn't get any error messages. So, Let's give this some epochs. Hmm. Well, okay, so that, it, it converged, but it, it, it doesn't change anything at all, right? You can see the error is always the same. So, so why is that? Let's, let's look at our y predicted. So why do we always get the same error? That must be because we always get the same y predicted. Uh, so let's print that out. Yeah, so that's all ones. One, 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 one. I think I know why. So let's go back and look at the activation function in this plot here. So I'm always getting ones. Right, so that means I'm always out here. And the reason I'm always out here is because x, x is very large, right? So if these w here's are between minus one and one, right? And we know the scores here, if we go back and look at the plot, right? The scores are between 30 and 100, right? So then, my x hidden will always be very, very large because these values here are between 30, that, well, anyway, they're much, much bigger than six. So 
what I have to do is I have to scale these, these values. And so that's okay, right? Because uh, if I, let's say, scale these values so that they're between zero and one, I'll get exactly the same plot, it's just that my x values will be a little bit different. Let's go do that. Okay, so, yes, oh, I just discovered an error here that shouldn't change things though. Okay, so what we need to do is just divide x by 100, and let's see if that changes. Okay, so now I'm getting something that's different than all ones, but it should be between 0 and 1. So why am I not? Ah, I see it. So that should be a plus. Okay, great. So now I'm getting something uh, y predicted that's, yeah, all between 0 and 1. Okay, let's, get, let's give this some epochs. Okay, so that's going down. Uh, it could probably, let's try a larger, uh, a larger learning rate. Okay, and more epochs. Oh, okay, so that looks, that looks very good really. So it, it, you can see we're getting the error down quite a bit. Let's give it 100,000. Yeah, we get it down even further. And in the next video, we'll look at the results.